In this tutorial, I'll show you how to handle imbalanced data in machine learning classification problems with an example in Python. Due to the complexity of this topic, this tutorial will have two videos. In this part one video, you'll learn what is imbalanced data, what are the proper evaluation metrics for it, and set up our example of highly imbalanced data set ready for modeling. In the part two video following this, you'll learn and apply six popular techniques to deal with the imbalanced data in Python, including oversampling, undersampling, and so on. By the end, you'll be able to make better prediction models with your imbalanced data set. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Just Into Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. So let's start from the definition. What is imbalanced data in machine learning? As you probably know, given a data set with known classes, we can model to predict the class a new observation belongs to. This is called the machine learning classification problem. Imbalanced data occurs when the classes of the data set are distributed unequally, so when the number of observations across classes is not even close to equal. It's actually quite common. An extreme example could be a data set of credit card transactions. There could be 99.9% .9 of legitimate transactions and only 0.1% of fraudulent transactions. This is a highly imbalanced data set. In this case, we can call the legit transactions the majority class, while the fraud transactions the minority class. Besides credit card fraud detection, other examples of imbalanced data include claim prediction or claim fraud detection in insurance companies, spam detection, customer churn or conversion prediction, and so on. So you can find the imbalanced problem in different fields. So why does imbalanced data cause a problem? While a slight imbalance wouldn't actually be a problem, it is a highly imbalanced data set that could cause issues. This is because most machine learning algorithms rely on enough data. When some of the classes have little data, the algorithm can't correctly predict its result. Thinking about the credit card fraud detection example, since the fraudulent data is underrepresented, a machine learning algorithm often ignores it and gives poor predictions for such classes. This is very frustrating since we want to detect fraudulent transactions. So it's critical to understand and handle the imbalanced problem. One more note for the definition. Since machine learning classification could be binary, so two class or multi-class, the imbalanced data problem could be for both as well. In this tutorial, we'll focus on imbalanced data for binary classes, but you could extend the concept to multi-class. All right, after mastering the definition, let's look at how to choose evaluation metrics. This is a critical choice for an imbalanced data set. We have to be aware of the accuracy pitfall. For the example of credit card fraud detection, a new transaction could be legit and get approved or fraudulent and get blocked. Assume we set a model to always classify new transactions as legit. So we always think they are legitimate and approve them. What would be the classification accuracy? Given that 99.9% .9 in the dataset is all legit, the accuracy is high at 99.9%. What an accurate model. But don't forget that our goal is to detect fraud. So such a model is useless. So as you can see, the traditional classification accuracy is misleading for highly imbalanced datasets. For the imbalanced dataset, we must look at the broader picture of the prediction results. We could use other evaluation metrics, such as area under the ROC curve, which is abbreviated as AUC, F-score, or precision recall curve. If you're new to any of these popular evaluation metrics, you can check out our article with detailed explanations. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. In this tutorial, we'll use AUC as the evaluation metric. It's a single metric that's easy to use. AUC has the highest value of 1 when the classifier can predict 100% correctly. We'll calculate the AUC of using the original imbalanced dataset versus the rebalanced datasets. So you can compare them and get an idea of the potential improvement of applying the imbalanced data techniques. But please note that the improvement varies for different datasets or machine learning algorithms. 
Now let's get to our example of imbalanced data. We'll quickly get it ready for applying the imbalanced data techniques. The dataset is about abalone, a species of marine snails. The dataset is small and straightforward. Our goal is to identify whether an abalone belongs to a specific class of 19. So this is a binary classification problem of either positive or negative. I've modified the data a little to fit Python better. So please go to the GitHub link in the description to download it. Now let's go to Jupyter Lab to work on the dataset. To save us time from typing, I have all the code here. First, using the pandas library, we can load the data into Python as df and look at its summary information. So each record in the data is one abalone. There are 4,174 rows and nine columns. The target is class, showing whether the abalone is positive or negative. Besides this, we have features about the abalone, including sex, different size measurements, and weight measurements. Among the columns, only sex and class are categorical data. The rest are numerical. By the way, if you're new to Python, our courses can get you from zero knowledge of Python to be able to use it for data analysis. Please check out the links in the description. Next, we'll transform the columns of the dataset. In this tutorial, we'll use the most basic machine learning classification algorithm, logistic regression. It's better to convert all the categorical columns for logistic regression to dummy variables. So we'll convert the two categorical columns, sex and class, before modeling. So if you're new to logistic regression, we have two tutorials that can help you understand the theory and how to apply it using Python. Please check out the description for links again. Now back to our code. Using the value counts method, we can take a look at the categories of sex and class. So class has two categories, negative and positive, while sex has three categories, male, infant, and female. We use different methods to convert them to dummy variables. Since class only has two categories, we can map its values. So if it's negative, map to zero, else when it's positive, map to one. So class will only have two values of zero and one. The column sex has three categories. So we need two dummy variables to represent it. We can use this get dummies function to generate three dummy variables for each category of sex. Then set the drop first equals true argument to remove the first level dummy variable, which is not necessary. So if we run this code and print out the data frame again, you can see that the column class is of values zero and one, while the column sex is converted to two variables, sex i and sex m. Each of them are dummy variables of either zero or one. These two dummies are enough to represent the three categories of sex. When sex i is one, it's an i, infant. Well, when sex m is one, it's m, male. When both of these are zero, sex must be f, female. This is great. Now let's take a closer look at the class categories. We use a value counts method with normalize equals true to print out the proportions. You can see that it only has two values of zero and one. The value of one is what we want to predict the class 19 abalone, and it is only 0.7667% of the dataset. This is certainly a highly imbalanced dataset. We can also run this line of code to visualize the count of two classes. As you can see again, the number of observations in class 0 is a lot more than class 1. Great! One more step before we move on to the imbalanced data techniques and modeling. Let's split the data set into training and test sets. We can use the train test split from sklearn. So df train and df test are the training and test sets based on the original data frame. The test size argument 
specifies that 20% of the data will become test. So DF test will have 20% of the data, while the other 80% is with DF train. We've also set the stratify argument based on class categories, so that both of the training and test datasets will have similar proportions of classes as a complete dataset. This is important for imbalanced data. And we've also set the random state as an integer of 888. You can use other numbers as you like. This is just to make sure we'll get the same result each time running. Now we have both the training and test sets. Let's also store the variable features as the column names of the features. So basically all the columns except for class. Now we can print out the categories of the class column for both the train and test stats to verify the split results. You can see that each set has roughly the same proportions of classes as the original data set. If we remove normalize equals true for both, you can also verify that the test set has around 20% of the total sample. Finally, we're ready to try out the techniques to handle imbalanced data in machine learning. Stay tuned for part two. We'll learn and apply six techniques to handle this imbalanced data set. In this tutorial, you've learned what is imbalanced data and set up our example data set for modeling. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.